Thank you, Jared. And thank you everyone for taking time out of your day to, to participate in this webinar, What's New in Facts. Okay, from an agenda standpoint, uh, we have a brief introduction. Most of you know uh, who Action Associates is, but we will go through uh, a brief slide on Action Associates. Move right into uh, a bit about FACTS and, and the modules that are available from within FACTS, as well as some external modules. I'll go ahead and demonstrate today uh, what I feel are some key new features that have been added into FACTS. Uh, we have a very diverse group on the phone, so some uh, folks are, are running some older technology, so some of the things that we will go through, maybe, maybe some of you already have, but I think that uh, I've highlighted some uh, really important aspects uh, uh, within the FACTS product to show uh, how it has continued to evolve and, and, uh, and become the distribution solution of choice. Um, we'll then talk about the FACTS extended ecosystem, a bit about hybrid cloud and information technology plans and wrap up with a QA session. Action Associates. So for those of you that don't know, Action Associates founded in 1979, privately held, headquartered in Maumee, Ohio. Uh, we have three divisions of which the supply chain division is the one that's relevant to everyone on the call. Um, the supply chain division has probably the most employees within the organization or darn near close somewhere, I would uh, venture to guess, between 40 and 50 employees throughout different functions, application consultants, software engineers, network engineers that work on the products as well. Support is 8 a.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Pacific, so we do have a 12-hour window here for support. Uh, there are other support agreements that are available. Um, please reach out to me if that's something that you're interested in. As I mentioned, um, the supply chain group is relevant to everyone on the call. FACTS makes up the largest customer base. We actively support between uh, somewhere between 350 and 400 FACTS customers nationwide. Our group, uh, the group that works with me, uh, I have 11 direct reports that work with me, all of which have deep experience in the FACTS product. You folks are very familiar with a, with a lot of those folks, but also we uh, we work with the, the network engineering group, which again has uh, three or four folks that are very experienced in the, in the FACTS practice as well. Um, the intent of today is to talk about what's new in FACTS, but also keep in mind that Action does have other products that, that we feature in the distribution world. So if it's time for a migration to a, a cloud-based, purely cloud-based solution, uh, reach out to myself or Terry Rogers and we'll, we'll get you pointed in the right direction. The left-hand side of this screen should be very familiar to you, to everyone on the call. Uh, FACTS is deep and wide. We list the modules that, that are relevant um, uh, to, to the releases and uh, you'll hear a little bit today about inventory, advanced inventory management, the credit card integration, the customer vendor return system, the Exception Control Center, and the Resource Manager. We highlighted those because those are all uh, fairly, uh, or announced fairly recently in, in uh, new, uh, new releases. Uh, specialization, we do, uh, as a lot of folks know, have a Manufacturing Control Service and Repair Job Cost Module. We work seamlessly with the Unformed product as well as document delivery, document management. EDI has become very, very prominent um, uh, in our current workload, and I foresee it being a, a very active product into 2019. Logistics, we have WMS systems that will interface. You're going to hear a lot more about these products as, as we talk about the ecosystem, reporting and analytics, web commerce, sales tax, unfortunately becoming more and more relevant, and we'll talk about our integration to Avalara CRM as well. Just a brief uh, little bullet on, on action again. We provide a complete solution. Um, you folks can read. We were 
Distribution Partner of the Year in 2018 on the right-hand side. We were the Growth Partner of the Year as well. Um, we do feature every uh, product, distribution product, in our uh, catalog that, that Infor uh, has developed, the Cloud Suite, SXE, Fax A+, Storefront. Uh, on the left-hand side, please note that we are a uh, hosting center, so um, we are revving up our second data center in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, that'll be in full force at the beginning of the year, so we can do replication within our own data centers. We do it uh, with a third party today. But a lot of the areas that we will talk about at the end that we can specialize in and, and help you folks. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump over to the facts presentation. And let's just do this for this particular purpose. We'll minimize that so we don't have any background there. Okay. All right, so what everyone should see now is the FACTS main menu. And for those of you who are used to an icon-driven menu, uh, that is the first what's new in FACTS. The menu system has changed. It has changed for security reasons. We, we, we changed it because um, Infor is very protective of security. And uh, this is regardless of what product, they pointed out some security holes. So we went ahead and adopted a new menu system. But along with uh, the look and feel being a bit different, what you're going to see are some attributes that we think are very uh, attractive to our, to our audience. The first of which is the right-hand panel. If you notice the right-hand panel, I have a customer inquiry, a job inquiry, customer AR inquiry sitting in the right-hand panel. This right-hand panel can be personalized. And think of it as a favorites menu. All of the modules that are available are listed in the left-hand side. Right-hand side become a personalized favorites menu. Very simple to create a favorites. If you were to want, for example, inventory, inventory inquiries, item inquiry, what you'll do is just click on that, and you simply drag and drop that into your personalized menu. So the beauty of that is for, for folks who specialize in only certain functions, customer service, et cetera, they have the ability to just list their tasks on the right-hand side and completely ignore the left-hand side. Um, if you're not allowed from a security perspective to access that particular uh, program and or module, the right-hand side follows the same security pattern as the left-hand side. So. I'll keep minimizing the left-hand side so that we can see the full-blown and then show you the drill in. So the important takeaway here is that you now have a personalized favorites menu that can be geared to, to really to your, to your workflow, to your day, okay? If you notice at the very top, there's a couple buttons at the top. I'm logged in as IN4, IN4 Global Systems. Just going to drill down here on the top, and I'm going to look at the user preferences. User preferences, I want to point out a couple key areas here. First of all, now the email address is relevant to the end user. Uh, I know that there are other spots in FACTS where you build email addresses, but this one will be relevant to the end user because it now ties in with what, what we're going to talk about consisting of alerts. So email addresses are relevant at this point in time. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out here real quickly is that we have defaults for branches, warehouses, salespersons, printers, et cetera, that depending upon what release you're on, this now follows the user, um, whereas before a printer was really assigned to a, a device or an area. So um, again, from a security standpoint, imperative that the printer or the default printer do, does follow the end user, okay? For those of you that uh, have, have uh, our menu system, even the old one, you do have font control, you do have screen size control. Let me go ahead and click down on the My Alerts so you get a feel for an alert. So what Infor has done is they've added an alert system to basically right now, it's really relevant in the purchase order system and the inventory system. 
okay? However, there are new alerts being added. For example, there are now credit hold alerts, which we'll talk about in a bit here. I've highlighted a particular alert. This alert says that there's abnormal lead time on a purchase order. What will happen is you have the ability, you as an end user, you have the ability to manage your subscriptions. So if POs are relevant to you, you can basically subscribe to this particular alert. And if the lead time is abnormal, that's the time between the, the PO and the receipt of the PO, you would get an alert automatically sent to you. And when you subscribe to the alerts, you have the ability to say, I want that alert emailed to me. That's where the email client comes into play. Or I want it sent to me in a fax alert, which I'll get back to in a second, um, or both. So as you can see here now, what we're doing is we're adding some uh, alerting or awareness into the system throughout the, again, in this case, throughout the purchase order system. There's another one relevant to purchase orders that it's late for the promise date, okay? But you'll see some other ones here that are really relevant to the inventory system, which are basically special orders tied in, or for example, maybe, uh, maybe you've got a seasonality issue here that comes into play, okay? I did mention that you do have new, new uh, uh, alerts that are on hold. So here's an alert for a service hold, and there is a new alert for a credit hold as well. So basically what has been developed in the newer releases is the alert system has been developed, and what it will do, for example, um, is if I go back to the uh, past the promise date, it'll tell you what warehouse, it'll tell you what vendor, it'll tell you the information relevant to that particular purchase order. This vendor is gonna be late um, for their particular delivery, okay? That email will be published or the alert will be published to you. How do you see an alert with inside the fax product? Basically what will happen is this particular button right here, the yield button will go yellow and you'll see that there are alerts waiting for you to, to, uh, to be aware of or to, to inquire into, okay? So really relevant fact is that within the user preferences, within the alert system, we've now added a full-blown alerting for, again, specifically PO inventory, um, some AR. I do foresee the expansion of the alerts moving into the sales order system, which would be a natural progression for, for alerts. Okay, while I'm in here, and this is a file maintenance, but I did want to take the opportunity to show you that every file maintenance can now be audited. So when you're looking at auditing, if you do, you know, if you do want to know who changed something, usually who changed that, that credit limit, who changed that, uh, uh, address or something along those lines, what you can do is you can set that file up to be audited. For example, if you view all audited files, you'll notice that I have the audit turned on for the customer master file. I'll go ahead and click on that customer master file. I'll inquire into my first customer, and you can see all of the changes that have been made to this particular customer including the one that I did this morning in preparation, and that was I went in to that customer and I changed the credit limit from $10,000 to $500,000. So we know the user that was logged in, we know the date, we know the time. Um, again, this stuff can be secured out, but you can turn on file maintenance auditing for any file maintenance. It's really relevant when you have new users and or again, perhaps there's a question as to somebody making changes to a file maintenance um, that that uh, may not be uh, may not be in the best interest of the organization. Okay, so it's a very simple process to turn on the file maintenance auditing. Here, it's just click to change your file maintenance. If I wanted to view, if it was turned on, I could view this particular file. In this case, I viewed them all 
But please note you can view by user, by field. It's a very, very uh, robust auditing system and uh, gives you a great deal of data based on the audit, okay? Okay, one more point and we'll get through menu 101. Um, I like to tout this. Everybody's had this for quite a long time. The module is denoted as office automation. We like to think of it as a little internal IMing system. If you notice the green here, it tells me that I've got two messages waiting. When I click on the green button here, it will open up my messaging. I'll go ahead and take a look at the messaging. And there were two messages out there. And one of them was from somebody sent me a note saying what's new uh, in fax. And you see that I'm using this as a little internal IMing system. I can reply, I can forward, I can mark it as read, I can keep it as a repository, et cetera. Um, so it's the ability in, you know, most of the time we've seen people jump out to do an email, send it out to folks. Um, this one is internal facts. Naturally, you have to log into facts in order to, to be able to see it. But again, you'll see it marked green here. And if you were to want to go ahead and enter a phone message that I called or a general message, it's a very simple process to enter that message. You can assign that, whoops, sorry. You can assign that message to a group of employees, okay, or an individual employee. You can ask for a reply. So think of it as a little internal IMing system within FACTS. Uh, there, does, there is security on it, but it's just something that we like to tout a bit now that uh, obviously instant messaging is, is, is very popular. Okay, I lied. You did not pass menu 101 quite yet. Let me go ahead and jump into um, an area that, that, that I think is gonna be relevant here. Let's take a look at the item inquiry. And notice that I popped the item inquiry, and I did pop a bunch of views in the background. This has been something that, that has been available for quite some time where you can pop multiple views in the background. I think end users forget about this, but I went ahead and go ahead and populated the, the warehouse view. I populated a price view, and I populated a usage view. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and close out the price view for right now because, and let me just drag and drop this over because I want you to see that my menu system in the background is still active. And this is a huge change and one, a very productive change in that if I click on the menu system and just hover over my icon, you'll see again here that I've got multiple functions still going on, which I should have got out of the general messaging, but you'll see I've got multiple functions. So I no longer need to log in and log out, okay? If I wanna begin a sales order, and go into order processing and go into order entry, so be it. And again, you'll see my icons now populated as I have them. So I don't have to log into two sessions, three sessions, four sessions. My menu is always available to me and allows me to log into multiple sessions, okay? So just be aware of that fact. I think it's a great fact for utilization, for productivity, um, and something very relevant in the new menu system. I like to say that you can get up to nine at, at one time. Um, that may not be totally true. Uh, there may be more, but I've, I've had mine up to nine in one session. Okay, we've now graduated from uh, menu system 101 and all the features that I believe are, are exciting and new to, uh, to, the fax, to the fax product. All right, I took you into item inquiry for a reason. And the reason why I took you into item inquiry <clears throat> is <clears throat> excuse me, something that is near and dear to our heart now. All of you do searches in the item inquiry. Please note that we can exclude inactive items now. So that is something that will make your searches be a little more relevant here. And it, it does have a detriment if you were looking for an inactive item, certainly the checkbox on and off will make it active or inactive. As I mentioned, we know what warehouse you belong to. So your warehouse availability is being shown here on warehouse number one. And that's right, folks, we're now showing warehouse availability and we're showing on order in the search routine. 
That's something that folks have been asking for for quite some time. Can't I just see how many I have when I search for it and give my end user, my customer, an answer? You now have that capability available to you, as well as how many are on order. If you needed to change your warehouse, obviously the warehouse button is there for change purposes. Okay? One other item that I want to uh, point out to, uh, let me just uh, say okay here and uh, go back to my go to button. You'll see a go to button now here as well. We've added go to's in a lot of the menus for your ability to jump to what we thought were relevant menus. Jump to an AR cust inquiry, jump to an SO cust inquiry, jump to the file ma uh, vendor inquiry, file maintenance is right from the item inquiry. So there is a new where use button. Um, if you've ever experimented with trying to delete an item, uh, that can be a pretty tumultuous effort. So in this case, you can go see where that item is being used. It'll tell you everywhere where it's being used. You can do your housekeeping and then delete that item. By the way, there is a mass delete now, very similar to the item change. That's very new in fact. So it'll allow you to change, um, delete multiple items. You build a catalog of items that you want to delete and you can go through that function and delete items. So that has been, uh, been uh, enhanced quite a bit from end user uh, uh, requests, okay? I'm going to talk about replenishment ma math in a moment here, but um, uh, it, it is available right here from your inquiry. You can show your replenishment math. I wanna show it from a different presentation, but uh, quite a few enhancements done in replenishment. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit out of there, and I'll go ahead and shrink these back up. And let's go ahead into the inventory control, the file maintenances. I don't do a lot of demos from a file maintenance, but I think this is very relevant. Let's go ahead and look at a particular item. And obviously your searches and all that work. And you'll notice the restocking button. So the restocking button, and some of you may have these features, but some of you certainly may not, so I wanna just go through them fairly quickly. Great deal of work in 787990. Uh, by the way, you're looking at 92 here today. Has been done in restocking and or replenishment, okay? Um, our restocking replenishment can be controlled all the way down to the item level, level for parameters. We won't spend a great deal of time in there, but I do wanna show you that at any point in time in this process, you could make a determination, understand how the order point, the line point, and the EOQ are being calculated. Everywhere throughout the system, we've given a button that says, show me the math, okay? So in this particular scenario, this item is on a backward forecasting method. There are three methods, forward and trend analysis as well, and we're looking at three months backward to do this particular calculation. We've got an average lead time of 11 days. We've got a state stock of 50%. So at any point in time, we used to get calls routinely that said, how is this order point being calculated? How is the line point being calculated? Any point in time, you have the ability to go look at the math. And the math goes into consideration as to things that I just discussed. It's backward, it's an A ranking item. We're looking at the last three months. It calculates your average daily usage. We're quite, quite a bit acronym heavy here, but it calculates your average monthly usage and then goes through and calculates your order point, which for those folks who are using this, you know that that's the point of no return. If your quantity available for sale falls below the order point, you will not be able to replenish this product under normal circumstances um, as fast as you're gonna go through it, okay? So that would be your order point, goes through and calculates your order point, and then also then does a calculation on your line point, which takes into consideration your review cycle, your average daily usage, and comes out and calculates the line point. So at any point in time, we can take a look, see at the mathematics behind it, and then also the economic order quantity being calculated for you, okay? We do a robust training on this particular methodology because all of these 
Static controls are they're actually not static, non-static in this case. All of these parameter settings do come into play in the calculation. You do have the ability to override the calculations. For example, if you're bringing on a new item and you want to keep a minimum usage amount, you have that ability to override it. You can override um, your, your uh, lead time. Uh, again, maybe, maybe you know that a facility now is closed and, and it's going to take you longer to get it, so you can set your lead time, override it, and also you can assign minimum order points as well and put expiration dates here. Okay, so just wanted to make you aware that in 787990, heavy, heavy replenishment comes into play. And the reason it comes into play is it's used in our purchasing side of the, S, uh, of the, uh, the uh, release. And when you look at purchasing now, purchasing in your entry, all starts with what we call the Buyer's Control Center. And what I'll do is quickly show you the Buyer's Control Center so you understand the math that comes into play that was just calculated. This person is buying, Ronald Patton is buying for procurement. Basically what you're seeing here now is we color code and we calculate. We automatically calculate based on those order points and line points a purchase order, we're comparing it to targets. So we have a dollar target, we have a weight target, we have a cube target, and we're comparing it to those targets to see if you should go ahead and release that particular purchase order. The color scheme here tells you red is urgent, orange is getting urgent, green you're okay, yellow is cautionary. So in these cases, you can see in my demo data, it's I've got quite a bit of data, our review cycles, 21 days for this particular vendor. I haven't met my buying target. I haven't met my ACH weight. Uh, I haven't met my cubes, but let's go ahead and drill down and take a look. And it will tell me what items I need to buy and how many of those items I need to buy from that particular vendor. We do this by assigning a primary vendor to each item. And then as you saw, the order point line points are being calculated. You'll see those out here. Anywhere where we have a magnifying glass, you can drill down. So if you wanted to see the lead time on that particular item, there's the lead time. If, you, if you're trying to make some decisions outside of the software, the, the decisions that have already been made, you have the capability of drilling down on that particular information. But again, order point, line point is here, EOQ is here, and it's gonna come back and tell you for all of the primary items that this vendor supplies for you, what you ought to buy based on those calculations. You see up in the top left-hand corner, there's a Create PO button. If you're satisfied with it, uh, the methodology is based on a gentleman by the name of Grant Howard's methodology. He claims that you should be able to do a purchase order in under a minute if you've got all your data set up properly. Again data being your, your order point, your line point, your lead time, your safety allowance. If you've got that data set up properly, he, his claim to fame is you should be able to review this very quickly and then go ahead and create your PO. So in essence, what we're doing here is the software has the ability to create the purchase orders for you. Certainly you have complete override capabilities, but it's imperative that you you realize that there's a lot of thought and development that went in to the software to match Grant Howard's methodology. And the, the goal here is right product on the shelf at the right time at the right cost, okay? All right, and again, there's a whole training session that we go through. We call it the Advanced Inventory Management Training Session. Um, if you folks have this already, and you're interested in it, certainly get a hold of me. We can get you an advanced inventory management training session. If you don't have it and you're looking to upgrade to, to some of the new feature functionality um, that, that we're showing today, then we can include that in your original uh, upgrade or we can do it as a phase two um, as you go. I will tout that one of our customers who had about $2 million in inventory 
um, by using this particular methodology was able to reduce their inventory by about 12%. So um, everyone on the phone can probably do that math and uh, you can understand um, what, a, what a savings it was for those folks without any impact on customer service. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at some other features. Um, very relevant to the replenishment is anywhere in the software now, if you right click, you'll see a button here for lost sales. Okay. In the older releases, we used to produce a lost sale report. Now we produce a lost sale that can, I state can, update your usage. So a lost sale because of some reason, i.e. out of stock, it was a non-stock item or your price was not competitive. If your price is not competitive, you probably aren't updating your usage. But if it's because you didn't have it, okay, you probably do want to update your usage because what will happen is it will talk to the qualified usage bucket within your item warehouse item file, and then your order point line point will be calculated off of that qualified usage because this is an alert system to your purchasing team that you lost the sale because you weren't stocked properly. Old school, somebody had to send them an email or somebody had to read the lost sale report and include that in the qualified sales. Now it's simply a right click. And again, if you're within sales orders and you right click, customer, salesperson, item, all that data is already filled in. So the important aspect is we made it very simple with a right click to book a lost sale and have that lost sale again talk to your usage, which talks to your replenishment, which again sets the goal of having the right stuff on the shelf at the right time at the right cost. Okay, before I jump into sales orders and show you the enhancements that I want to show in sales orders, because this is one of them that, that I want to tout. Uh, I just simply keyed in the SM, and I'm going to go into file maintenance, and I'm going to go into our new credit card control, okay? So this is really, really relevant to PCI compatibility within the fax product. We no longer store, and we really didn't store credit cards in fax previously, but we no longer store them at all in fax. We've integrated with a company by the name of Senpos, and what will happen here is you can transmit your credit card transaction real-time to Senpos. Yes, you can have chip-driven terminals. So if you have walk-in traffic, we do support the EMV terminals. We are transmitting, if you would like, level three data. Now, what level three data means is that you're going to get, it's the, it's the most robust fraud protection that you can have. So you will get your best rates from SendPOS based on you transmitting level three verification. When you pull into a gas station and you key in your zip code, that's about as Level one verification that you can get does present, prevent some fraud, but again, it's a very simple method of attempting to prevent fraud. As you go forward, you'll see address verification, you'll see CVC code verification. Level three also gets involved with the products that you're selling um, to, the, to the end user. We do level three within SendPOS. We also do authorizations now and pre-authorization. That's an important concept. We never did that before. So if I were placing an order and maybe an order in advance, I needed uh, need it in 10 days, I gave you a credit card, I could pre-auth that credit card. Now we do have to be careful with fees from your credit card provider and thus we have um, expiring pre-auths and auto re-pre-auths here uh, built into the control files. So the takeaway here is that we're doing authorizations. We're not 
hitting the credit card for the full amount and, and having it uh, the transaction process completely at that time, we're doing off and, uh, pre-offs to make sure that we will get paid, okay? Very important concept. The other important concept is all previous releases, we could not have multiple accounts. You can now have multiple accounts. So for anyone that has multiple merchant accounts, you can set them up by warehouse, key in your multiple merchant IDs here, and you can have, you know, if you have a Denver facility and a Pittsburgh facility, they can have multiple card transactions, okay? Last but not least, you'll see tokenization here. What will happen is you can now store, I mentioned PCI compliance. You do not store the credit card on file, but inside of the customer master file, you can designate whether or not you want to store a token for that particular customer. And in storing a token here, okay, you have the ability, it's an alias. It's, think of it as a, a lock, a key to the vault, okay? Your credit cards, your customer's credit cards are being vaulted at SendPos in a secure vault. In this particular scenario, we send back a token. Whenever they want to process again, we can use that token to open the vault, reauthorize the credit card, make sure the transaction's good, and it'll send back a new token. So the beauty of it is you'll hear it referred to as a reference, an alias, a token. Again, no credit cards are being stored in fax. We store tokens. Thus, you can store your customer's cards as a customer service on file here and be completely PCI compliant. So we found that to be a very, very strong attribute. Okay. That was very quick on credit card integration, but please note those, fa those fa factors as you, as you consider upgrading. We have seen, because of the level three verification, where our customers get a significant reduction in their credit card fees. All right. Let's take a look at sales orders. Let's go into order processing, and let's go into order entry. And I'm going to call up an existing order because I want to show you a few new features that have been uh, introduced in the existing order. And that's our notes file. Okay, so a couple things that you'll see here. Right away, um, within this particular area, we will see the ability here to basically show an order status change. So this is new. Um, it gives you an audit trail of everything that happened to that order, what date, what time, and who did it, okay? So in this case, the order was confirmed. In this case, we had route control turned on, so they're ready for register. In this case, the ticket was printed. So we're keeping track of everything that's going on. It's, it, 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 it's not an audit trail of what fields were being changed. That's not what it is, but basically it tells you that, you know, what transacted with this particular document. In a lot of cases, people say, well, who reprinted that ticket? You'll have that availability now right from within the, the order processing um, uh, module, okay? So that's something to be aware of. You'll notice a few new buttons at the top. We now have what's called standard orders and the ability to import a standard order. So if you ever have a customer, if you want to kind of run it like a shopping list, okay, or a listing pattern, I have one customer that this would be very relevant to because they only have a certain amount of product and their customers buy, maybe they have 30 or 40 products, they're actually in the food distribution industry, they could create a checklist of all their items and then simply run down that checklist with the customer asking them if they want X number, in this case, pounds of, of, of the product that they're selling. So you have the ability to take an order and make it a standard order, okay? Now, if one already exists, it'll ask you 
If you want to replace it, temporary items are not allowed to be on a standard order. And in the case if you have a standard order already created, then you could import that standard order. And what will happen is it will populate that standard order. Now, in this case, it found an item that I already quoted as well. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. That may be new to, to some of you where we're popping. This is a static control. If you've quoted an item to a customer, then it will pop that item up. Sometimes we've seen uh, your customers call in four different times hoping to get four different prices from four different people. If you record that as a quote, you'll have that. But again, it will pop up, and if you import that, go ahead and create suggested POs, and it will import the items based on that particular function. Here are the items that it wants to import from the standard order. Your quantities are here. You can skip those items, or you can go ahead and import the items. And again, they'll be on back order in this case. Okay? So I can go ahead and import those as well. All right, so that's a standard order, and that adds some description, et cetera, tied into it. So the key element here is that I'll skip that. All right, the standard orders are tied in at this point in time. Okay, so you can see now it came in. It blew in from the standard order. The, the intent here is to give you kind of a, a shopping cart, i.e. shopping list checklist type of approach to be able to import standard orders. All right, got a few more minutes here. Right-hand side, you now have what's called sidebar. This is pretty sweet. I'm in the middle of an order. I have a sidebar function. My sidebar functions will show all the items that this person previously bought, and you do have drag-and-drop capabilities. So if you drag-and-drop it, I'll go ahead and say okay to add that to the warehouse, and now it adds that particular item. So this is all their prior purchases that this particular customer has had, if they're buying it again, drag and drop capabilities exist, and I don't have stock on these particular items, so I'll add it in. Okay, the sidebar not only consists of prior purchases, but when you do your drill down here, you will see item purchases, companion item, long-term surplus, standard orders, quotes, price contracts, notes, all of these, sorry about that, all of these are available, okay? Open orders are all available to you as a sidebar here. And I think you're all going to like this particular one. If you're on a prior purchase and you want to see what else was on that invoice, just click on that invoice and we'll go and populate the invoice on a prior purchase, okay? So this function is called sidebar. You can have it turned on or turned off. It's simply a drag here. It'll show you it defaults in this case to the prior purchases. But I can, again, look at open orders, and I have drill down capabilities on all of those type of things from right within the sidebar. Okay, sidebar being added as well. Drag and drop capabilities from, from the sidebar. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab, jump out of this order because I, I want to show one more quick thing here in order entry. And that is, let me call up another order that I grabbed up this morning. And again, we had customer notes out there uh, below minimum profit. Uh, by the way, requested date can now be a mandatory field. So that's something of importance um, where, you know, your operators can't skip it. You can make that mandatory. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to go ahead and close this order, so I'm going to say I'm done, and I'll say OK. And you should see now on your screen the ability to produce an acknowledgement. Acknowledgements have been something that our customers have been wanting for a long, long time, and you now have the ability to print that acknowledgement and print prices on that acknowledgement. By the way, we've also added a packing slip to the print functions within the order entry. So you've got, you've got a pick ticket, you now have an acknowledgement, and you have a packing slip if you want to use all three documents. This acknowledgement, if you're a licensee to document delivery, it will follow document delivery, and therefore you can email acknowledgements to your customers 
Uh, or if you have the fax email module, you can do them one up here and email it out to, to your uh, customer. Or if you're running your orders in batch, you have document delivery, you can also email those acknowledgments out to the end user. So something that we've been uh, hearing for a long, long time is customers have been very, very excited about um, adding the, the acknowledgement. Um, I'm not going to print this right now, but basically adding the acknowledgement, um, and that's now done for you. Okay. Let me call that order up again. Um, actually, let me do this. Um, released earlier. I want everybody to see this because this is uh, something that uh, I'm not sure even users may have it. They may not be using it. We have what's called the resource manager. I'm going to go ahead and launch my resource manager. Now, again, you could launch that as you log in, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and put that in sync with my order entry. And what you'll notice here in your resource manager is that I have the ability to show pictures, okay? But don't let it think that it's only pictures. I have the ability right here to show whatever it is I want. We're not storing this inside a fax. And if I double click, it will open that particular document. So I can store anything, spec sheets, anything I want inside of the resource manager, and in this case, the resource is tied to an item, okay? So a lot of times people think it's relegated just to pictures. That's not the case. And by the way, anytime you right-click, you can email directly from the resource manager. So you can select this for an email and send that out um, via email. So again, if it's spec sheets, so be it you have that capability, okay? Let me just uh, do this. We'll drag and drop that right over here. We'll go back here, close this out, and real quickly, we're going to go right back into that order that I had on the screen. Okay, and again, let's just go ahead and we'll go ahead and add an item. Okay, we added the I-102 item. And again, if you follow the resource manager, because I put the resource manager in sync with my order entry function, you'll notice that the resource manager immediately changed to match the item that I have in my order here. So uh, a lot of times it'll help store a picture, store a spec sheet, those type of things. And then again, as I mentioned, anytime right click, you have that capability. So that's been added a few releases ago, but I like to tout that as, as something new and relevant. And um, those pictures could be coming from your catalog, wherever. Um, again, we don't store them. You link those based on a browser-based linkage. Okay, last but not least, before I flip right back to the, to the uh, PowerPoint for a couple things, and let's go ahead and close out the resource manager. Um, if you'll note here in the customer returns, there's a brand new customer return system, and that customer return system ties into a vendor return system. I went ahead and put a return in previously here. You give us the reason for the return, it'll tie into the vendor return system. The BCC that I showed earlier, will create a vendor return, and you have complete tracking within it. So it'll say, hey, if I'm waiting for my vendor to approve this credit, my customer returns it to me, I'm returning it to my vendor, I'm waiting for my vendor to return it, you would have already had that tied in with a vendor return PO, vendor replacement POs can be tied in. It's completely tied into the BCC and there are inquiries on the CRS inquiry as well. From a customer inquiry, it'll give you a status based on what's going on on that particular transaction, okay? Very, very robust module and has been added to, uh, or sub-module, added to handle 
the complete customer return process. Hey, you can do a quick credit too from it. That's not the point. The point is you've got to designate what you're doing with the return and how your vendor quite possibly is treating that return. Okay, so let's go back here and let's go run this from this particular slide and then we'll open it up for questions. You're gonna hear a lot in 2019 about the fax extended ecosystem. The fax extended ecosystem, we just got done talking about what's been added to fax, a lot of robust features added to fax, there are more coming. For example, their plans in, in, in future releases are to enhance that sidebar to put it into the purchase order system, um, be very functional in the purchase order system. There's plans to put the companion items into the PO system. So lots of robust things coming from within fax, but also outside of fax. And this is where action is very, very heavily involved. I mentioned sales tax. Sales tax, for those of you that are in e-commerce, has changed dramatically. We interface with the leading sales tax processing product, Avalara. Okay, we have a direct interface with Avalara. It's robust. It gets down to the address level, okay, of where your, sales where, where your customer is located, and it will calculate the proper sales tax for you and pass it back to fax. In fact, you can even file your sales tax forms within it. We have full integration to Avalara. Our I analytics, our I reporting, a lot of you already have this, but we have a business intelligence tool based on MITS. Document management, unformed document management, a lot of you have it. There's a new version coming out. Unformed 10 will be out, which gets heavily involved in workflow. We have a customer that now wants to interface with an HR payroll system. We'll be working with them to do that integration from a third-party payroll system that'll talk directly to the fax general ledger. WMS, heavy emphasis right now. We have a product called Pro Warehouse, which brings barcoding into your warehouse, and we have a full-blown Acellos warehouse management solution as well. Very excited about mobile sales processing. iPad, laptop, surface-driven for your sales reps, and even inside sales reps who maybe walk around like a furniture store with their clients, we can now process directly sales orders and quotes into fax from the field. It's a web-based solution. Starship interfacing for freight. We're looking at a new CRM interface. We obviously interface with storefront, but we're also looking at interfacing with a, another e-commerce solution which has a content manager. Already covered SendPost and talked about EDI being very, very relevant in today's world. A lot of the products that we're now interfacing with are cloud-based products. So keep in mind, we have a hosting center. We can host your fax installation and or we can connect you to other products that you saw on the previous screens. Here's some reasons and rationale as to why you may wanna be hosted. Exactly 24 seven support co-location, you get out of the hardware business, get out of the backup and disaster recovery business, and in a lot of cases, dedicated IT personnel, we become the surrogate. So a lot of products are living in the cloud today. Our EDI solution does live in the, it, 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 it's hybrid, part of it lives in the cloud, part of it lives on, on your server. And then very important, one of the things that we can sit down and work with you on is a one, three, five year technology plan. Um, upgrading facts, what version are you on? You just saw some of the neat features that are being added, more coming. Extend facts, you just saw some of the, from a very high level, the extension. And then basically greater automation, barcode. Very, very, we've sold in the last six months, five barcode warehouse management solutions because of accuracy, because of reliability, those type of things. Technology-wise, we can certainly help you with your hardware. And again, we're involved in, 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 in analytics of you using your software um, uh, from a higher level utilization perspective. We can do additional training for you folks, review your processes. And within that technology plan, we can talk about 
migration to other products. If you're seeing that, that perhaps you need to move to some other product, again, we, we, we represent all, all of the import products in that area. That was a lot in one hour. Jared, I'm going to turn it over to you for questions. Okay. We've had a couple come in so far. The first one I want to go over is one second, I'll pull it up here. Is uh, is this version compatible with Macs and iPads? So I clarified that, and they were asking both about fax being compatible with both Macs and iPads, and they're also asking about the third party that you were talking about just a second ago. Okay, so um, you would need to add a product to your Mac or iPad to basically emulate Windows for core fax. The third-party products, for example, the mobile sales product is written as a web-based product and therefore browser-based product and therefore it is Safari compatible, so yes. So core facts, you're going to have to emulate Windows. I'd watch my presentation on the iPad. Third-party products like the mobile sales product, absolutely it's available on, on iPads. Okay. Uh, next question. They were asking about what's coming up with the new release of FACTS and when it's coming out. Okay. Next scheduled release, you saw 9.21 just now. 9.22 is out November 16th. Um, it went through and added sidebar to all of the sales order functions. So sidebars in quotes, in confirmation, in direct invoice. It was obviously in, in sales orders. And it cleaned up known issues, known bugs that were submitted. I think it cleaned up close to 100 bugs. That'll be out on November 16th. 9.3 will be out in May of this year. And what you can expect in 9.3 is, I mentioned sidebar um, coming for your purchase order system, companion items coming in your purchase orders. If you're a storefront user, or a mobile user, uh, we're developing API alerts that says that, that will tell you that an order has come in um, and or quote has come in. Um, they're looking at integrating the manufacturing control with the BCC. I must give you the disclaimer, all these things that I tell you that are coming in 9.3 may or may not be included. The ones that I've already stated are being worked on, although MC for BCC is scheduled I didn't see that it was being worked on yet. Um, rush order status in BCC. Unform's new version will be uh, uh, released in, in 9.3 as well. Scheduled time, May of 2019. Sorry about that. That was responding to somebody. Okay. Okay. Uh, next question. What is the process for moving facts to the hybrid cloud that you were mentioned earlier? Okay, so if you were to become a, a hosted, whether it's in our data center or someone else's, what will happen is um, Infor actually has a, a, an addendum to your agreement that we need to go through with you in order to, to move that into a hosted environment. So you'd first start with your, your, uh, fa your action sales team, work to get that addendum, uh, agreed upon. There are some fees that are associated with that addendum. Once that's done, then we would get the proper codes from Infor. Uh, again, if it's if you're migrating to a different version of the operating system and it's compliant, we got to be careful with compliancy. Um, basically, what we would do at that point in time is we would peel off your programs, your data, etc., move it into into our hosting center establish all the connectivity for you, very similar to an upgrade, would do that in a mock environment, and then make sure that your functions are all working, on forms working, uh, uh, e-commerce is working, whatever it is that you're doing, make sure that those functions are working in a mock environment, and then schedule a go live, which would mean we would move just your live data. Um, usually we can pull this off in Again, if you're not upgrading and you want to be hosted because your, your hardware is on its last leg or something, we can usually pull this off in, in 45 to 60 day period, maybe even a little quicker. Certainly if you're upgrading, then, then we've got additional challenges. But that's, 
starts with the adenum within four and, and then basically follows the same process as an upgrade where we're in a mock environment. Okay. We had uh, several other questions just come in. All right. The next one I have for you, Gary, is how many vendors can you tie to an item for purchasing? For example, we have three suppliers for the same item. Yep. Say that one fourth uh, 20 inch screw, but may need to order from a secondary supplier. Will the BCC yep. handle this? Okay. Great question. So the, the answer to the question is you can tie unlimited vendors. That's the answer to the first part of the question. So there's, there's, there's a default vendor that's tied to the item, and obviously that's, that's the default. There's a vendor item file which allows you to tie as many vendors as you would like to that particular item as well and use them for secondary purchasing. The BCC will work off of the primary vendor. Um, so basically, when you're in demand, when you're in need for that particular item, it will be log logged under the primary vendor. We suggest that you, that you use the notes, okay, and or if it is somebody like that, then in certain cases, and, and, and one of our application consultants can work with everyone on it, you may have an undefined vendor or you may have a multiple vendor so that it appears in a BCC under that particular vendor. You can always add it in the BCC to your purchase order, okay, uh, for, to a secondary vendor, but the direct answer to the question is it will appear in the BCC under the primary vendor. Awesome. Okay, next question for you, Gary. Uh, this is specific to document delivery. So in 9.2, does document delivery work with RM-specific contact for quotes and sales orders acknowledgement? Did you say RM, Jared, RM? M, correct. Uh, let me, let me, uh, let's, let's, we're going to come back to that question, Jared, uh, after, after the presentation. RM did use a different delivery mechanism than document delivery. Um, and uh, they, they called it electronic distribution or ED. I need to do a little work on ED. I'm not as familiar with ED as I am with document delivery. Um, so we're, we're going to have to come back to that. To that, uh, If that person put their name on it, great, and answer it. My suggestion would be as you upgrade, take a look at um, um, the, the RM util utilization used a lot of Optio, used the ED electronic delivery. We have standardized on document delivery, Unform, as our products of, 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 of sale. Um, so we may want to look at replacing those products, but to, to the answer, uh, I'd have to get uh, back to them to see if we've done any integration with RM. Okay, and I do have their contact information, everything, Gary, so okay. you can reach out yep. to them after. Yep, yep, I don't, I don't want to mislead anyone. Okay, and then uh, we're going to make this the last question since we're five minutes over. So the last question okay. I have um, is um, if moving to the cloud, does it make it easier for upgrades? So are upgrades easier if you move to the cloud? Uh, yes. Uh, now, when I say yes, here's the, here's the key element. Upgrades are always easier if we aren't heavily modified. So that's, that's, that's the first stipulation I want to make. But the important thing here is when you move to the cloud, and especially in our data center, our ability to give you more disk space, our ability to give you additional uh, uh, memory, it's, it, 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 the, the technical guys say it's a click of the button. It's a turn of the switch. Okay, and because you're in a virtualized environment, we can, we can quickly give you greater disk, greater memory. We can, we can move your data. We have all the tools there, so we can move your data into that mock a lot quicker than, you know, on, on, on an on-premise server. So really, it's, 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 it's the, the infrastructure and it's the 
um, uh, logistics side of things, as well as our tools are all, all, all there. So that's why in certain cases, some people who are going to be hosted in the end, they'll move their existing installation. And I must clarify, I think it's 7.7 seven or 7.8 and above. If you're below that, we cannot move your existing installation into our hosting center. But they move it in first, get live in the hosting center, Jared, and then we do their upgrade because we have all the tools there. So it's, it's, it, it just makes it that much more efficient. Okay. Awesome. So we're going to say that's it for Q&A. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to Gary. Uh, Gary, could you go to the next slide, please? Yes, I can. Sorry about that. Oh, no, you're good. So uh, Gary just put his contact information up there. So if you have any other questions about what's new with FACTS, please feel free to reach out to Gary. His phone number is 412-515-0496, or you can send him an email at gkirstein at action.com. Also, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to Terry Rogers. She's a supply chain division sales manager. Her phone number is 623-234-8624, or excuse me, 23, or you can send her an email at trogers at action.com. If you'd like a copy of today's recording, please feel free to send me an email. My email address is jgator, spelled J-G-A-T-E-R, at action with a K, spelled A-K-T-I-O-N dot com. Send me an email, and I'll send you a copy of the recording later this afternoon. But thank you for attending today's session. We really hope that you found value in it, and I think we're going to call that a wrap. Thank you, Jared. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, everyone.